Good morning, folks. Lots to discuss, including a second video coming today. In 171 angstroms, we see bright umbral magnetic field loops turning out of sight onto the far side of the sun. They belong to a large sunspot group that crested the Earth-facing disk over the last week, and despite an Earth-facing solar quiet, she did manage to fire some flares before departing. The top feature on the Earth-facing disk the last day was a filament coming in on the north. It slowly lifted and then snapped, sending plasma across the bow and towards the northern polar coronal opening. Otherwise, the Earth-facing disk was calm. We had no large Earth-directed flares or coronal mass ejections. Let's come over to spaceweathernews.com to find that lower solar flaring. It's on the decline as those big sunspots have moved on, leaving only the smaller northern spots which do remain magnetically separated, blue and red split side to side. The solar wind speed in yellow is rising, and denser waves are intermittently delivering instability to Earth's magnetic shield. We'll be watching for more. Let's come back to the coronal holes, but with a solar wind speed. The red up top belongs to the incoming northern coronal hole, and it was alone on the north in force. But it weakened, and its outward force has now shifted to the equatorial portion of the coronal hole. The red's down there. Looking at the fields wrapped around the star, it's just positive openings across the north, but a distinct bunch south of the polar fields, nearer to the equator, stole the force. Coming to the sun in 211 angstroms, the northern dark areas are the coronal holes that are either weak or have lost power. And that equatorial Australia-looking coronal hole is now the big man on campus. No magnitude 6 earthquakes for more than 7 days. We're way below average, but the quake watch kicks back up tonight. Top news includes a video of a flyby at Charon done by New Horizons. If you think Mars is scarred, you should see Pluto's largest moon. The video and article describing the features is linked for you below. We also have another study suggesting mega tsunamis are possible, 800 feet. This study aimed to finally settle the debate about whether or not these were indeed possible. I promise I am never flying over Indonesia. Another airplane is missing there, along with everyone on board. And 33 people are missing in the Bermuda Triangle, along with their massive cargo ship. Joaquin hit them hard. And that leads us into the new wind map, windyty.com, very similar to Null School's map and with some tricks of its own. But the big weather story isn't here in Australia. It's the hurricane we just mentioned, Joaquin. The storm is out to sea and won't make landfall, but watch what happens here. High pressure in Canada is going to aid a major convergence line where the wind collides off that hurricane low, and that's where we see storms and where the lows drive the precipitable water. To get a better understanding, watch the rain expected to come to the east coast from this storm and see how it sticks to that convergence line. Record-shattering totals are expected. Also, folks, there will be a storm surge up and down the entire coastline this weekend and into Monday. It already completely submerged an entire island in the Bahamas. Website members, today's Fly on the Wall episode will post in a few hours, but while you wait for that, as soon as this news uploads, I'm going to upload a second video today. Our two papers will be published soon, just in time for observing the frontier, and they deserve a bit more hype. And when I say our papers, most of you know I mean it. This victory belongs to all of us. Back to the old wind map for our current conditions, plus shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.